Good morning, Algebra 1. We're going to talk about multiplication properties of exponents. Now, a little bit of vocabulary you need to know. A monomial is a number, a variable, or a product of numbers and variables. Okay, number and a variable. Okay, so 4 is a monomial. 24 is a monomial. 400 is a monomial because it's a constant. Okay, so a constant is a monomial. If I have x, that's a monomial. y, z, you can think of 100 letters or combinations. Okay, if I have 4x, that's a monomial because it's a product of a number and a variable. I could have a y squared added onto that. Now it's not added, it's multiplied. It's a product, four times x times y squared, okay? A constant is just a real number, which means it could be a whole number, it could be negative, it could be a fraction, okay? And that's important because um, if I have x over 2, that's the same as 1 half times x, okay? That's a monomial, 1 half times x. It's a product. Not a monomial is if I have 4 over x because that's a division problem, okay? So when I have a variable in the bottom, that's not a monomial. That's a problem, okay? This, if you remember from pre-algebra, is the same as 4 times x to the negative first. So if it has a negative exponent, it's not a monomial either. Okay? Now, hopefully you remember that that negative power means it's a reciprocal. Okay? And it doesn't go with the 4, just the x. Okay, product of powers. So if I have two numbers and they have the, the same base or two expressions with the same base and I'm multiplying them, well, that just means that I'm going to add the powers, okay? So if I look at this, now if you think of your commutative property, your commutative property, this is all multiplication. 6 times n cubed times 2 times n to the 7th. I can use my commutative property and associative properties to change those around. Do you have to show this? No. Most people do this in their head. Okay, but it's the idea that you're going to put the numbers together and you're going to put the n's together. 6 times 2 is 12. 3 plus 7, that's n to the 10th power, okay? So when I have this one, notice this p does not have a power. Hopefully you remember that any number without a power is raised to that first power. So this is going to, my only number is 3, p, 1 plus 3 is p to the 4th, t, 3 times plus 4 is 7. Okay, and I probably should have made those smaller because you can't have, all your coefficients have to go in front. If you were to see a P with a 4 after it, you would assume that that was an exponent, not a coefficient. Okay, all right, power of a power. Here's, this is a new one. You've never had this one. If I have a to the n power raised to the n power, okay, that means I have a to the m written as a factor n times. This is where we multiply. Okay? So when I have 2 to the 3rd raised to the 2nd raised to the 4th, all those powers I'm just going to multiply. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. This is 2 to the 24th power. And if I had my calculator, I could figure out what that is. But oftentimes when they're that big, okay, you usually can just leave it. 
It is a number though, so I could calculate it. T to the second raised to the fifth, well, I'm just gonna do two times five. That gives me T to the 10th. Okay, make sure you try the guided practice. Power of a product, okay? This is just using that idea of the distributed property because we're gonna distribute the power. So area of a circle is pi r squared, and if, if r is 2xy squared, that means I really have pi times the quantity 2xy squared, all raised to the second power. This is gonna go to that square, it's gonna go to the x, it's gonna go to the two. And I've gotta do that part first. Two squared is four, x, that's like a one, one times two is two, two times two is four, and usually they'll put the pi on the end because it's like a label. If I wanted to know approximately what this was, I could find a close equivalent, but we're not gonna worry about that. Okay, so I put an extra example, so negative two f to the second power g to the third h to the second all raised to the third power that means i'm going to distribute this to everything inside the parentheses now that negative to a third power means it's still going to be negative if i had an even power it would be positive okay Two to the third power is eight. Three times two is six, so I'm gonna have f to the sixth power. Three times three is nine. g to the ninth power, two times three, h to the sixth power. Okay, I hope that helps. Watch your negatives. All right, in example five, when you're simplifying expressions, that just means, hey, there's more than one step. You're gonna to have to use more than one property. Be careful, okay? So we're gonna do it a part at a time. I'm gonna distribute this square to everything. Here, I've gotta do my power of a power first, okay? So three squared is nine, one times two is two, four times two is eight times negative 2y raised to the sixth power. And again, I'm gonna distribute this within. It's even, so that's gonna become a positive. The first one stays the same. Negative two raised to the sixth power is 64, and it's gonna be positive. y to the sixth, and now I can finish it. I'm gonna do nine times 64, which, ooh, I don't know that off the top of my head. Nine times 64 is 576. Now this one has an X, this one doesn't, so the X squared is gonna stay the same. Y to the eighth times Y to the sixth, that's when I add y to the 14th. Hope that helps. Bye.